second video in the 1201 R series. I'm going to show you how to make some basic graphs with R. That's the first thing. Then I'm going to show you how to save your work. And I'm also going to show you how to convert your output to HTML um, and then PDF for in order to have it in a form in which you can submit it to Courseworks if you want to do it that way. So right now I'm in the 1201.info book website and looking at the first chapter, Descriptive Statistics, and you'll see that there's a lot of information here about how to do things in R that are covered in that particular chapter. So this is actually the data that we looked at in class this week, the prices, the first week of classes, um, the prices of those apartments in Morningside Heights, the one bedroom apartments. So this is a vector. Remember, we create the vector with C. And now we have a new function called stem, which creates a stem and leaf plot um, using that data. So I'm going to show you how you would do that in the actual environment, because I know sometimes that can seem a little different from when you see it in a place like this. So what I did was just copy the data, and now I'm going to our studio, and I'm going to paste it into the console. And I see I have the variable prices. And if you want to be really sure that it's there, you could type prices and see that, in fact, you have the data. So now we're ready to create the stem and leaf plot. So we write stem prices. And ta-da, we have our stem and leaf plot. So really simple. You can see why there's a great benefit to using software to do this rather than trying to do it by hand. So the next one I'm going to show you is histograms. And I know I'm doing this in a very simple way. I'm not modifying things. I'm going to show you a little bit later how to do that. We're just getting the absolute most basic, shortest form of command uh, for creating these graphs. So HIST is the function for histogram. If we do hist prices, we get a histogram of the prices. Now, you may have seen graphs from R that look different from this. You should know that there are two graphical systems. There's actually more, but two main ones. What I'm showing you right now is what's called base R graphics. It's better for what we're doing, basic statistics, introductory statistics. There's another package, which I actually use much more often, called ggplot2 that does a lot of different things. If you continue in statistics and data science in particular, you're going to want to learn that. But for now, this is an easier way of doing things, especially since we're working with vectors. And this system works much better with vectors. The third thing, which we haven't gotten to in class yet, or at least not while I'm making the video, are box plots. And again, a really simple function, box plot, and hit enter. And there we have a box plot. I'll be explaining in class what it all means. What I'm showing you here is just how to draw it. So I challenge you to do to create a stem and leaf histogram or box plot in Excel. There's a lot of arguments sometimes among students. Why do I have to learn R? Can I just do this in Excel? Try it. See how far you get. You won't get very far because that's not what Excel is good at. That's not what it's designed to do. So next thing, I'm going to show you how to save your work. So let's say I did all of this stuff and now I want to save it and I want to get it into a form that I could submit it for my homework. So you can think of the console as the place where you're just trying things out. You might um, do things that don't work. You might get errors. Maybe I typed box plot with two X's so I get an error. I don't want to save that. I just want to save the stuff that works. So what I'm going to do is go back and find the stuff that I want. And there's different ways you could do this, but one way is to just copy and paste it into a new pane, which we haven't used before. That's the pane on the top, and that is called the source pane. So another way that you could get it there is to go to the history and find that line in the history. It's actually more than that. Oops. I just used the shift up arrow to make sure I get the whole thing. And do to source, and I'll get it there as well. Either way, it doesn't matter. You have to be careful. It might, I think it's, um, there's a problem with the line breaks the way that I just did that. Um, but we just need it once, so I'm going to erase one of these. Okay. And then I'm going to put my three graphs also in 
the source pane. And now I have my entire project. So a couple things. One is you could just save this and you're going to save it as an R file. So let's call this three graphs. And you can save it just like you would save any other program. It's really a text file. It has that information. So now if I close out of our studio and go back in, okay. Well, it still has it here because I never closed it. So let's try that again. Let's actually really close it. And now leave. I'm going to actually restart the session and quit. I want to make sure that my environment is clean. Okay, and go back here. There's nothing here. Now I can open that file. Okay, and I get my work back no different than saving and opening work for in any other program. But this still isn't what we need to submit to CourseWorks if we want to submit this as part of a homework assignment or share it with someone. The easiest way to do that is to click on this little notebook icon which says Compile Report. So I'm going to click on that. And the first time you do it, you're going to get a message that tells you that you need to install some required packages. So click Yes on that. And then it's going to ask you what report output format you want. You may be tempted to do PDF or Word. You can't do that now without installing some additional things, which are a little harder to install. They're not things that you need that you can install right from within our studio. So when you're starting out, leave this as HTML and compile it. Okay. And now an amazing thing happens. You get the output and your code all in one document. So now I have an HTML file, which is the type of file that everything is on, on the web. It has the code. It has the output for my stem and leaf plot. It has a histogram and it has the box plot. So I could also look at this in the browser and there's my file and I can find it in in the folder in which I saved that original file. I put it in the Documents R Studio folder. And so now I have an HTML file and that original R file. So this one is just those four lines of code. The HTML has the code and the output. So if I were submitting this to CourseWorks, I could go in and then just click this file and upload it as part of my solutions to my homework assignment. So. That is how to save and how to submit your work. What we're going to do now is go back to um, chapter one in 1201.info so I can show you some variations um, that you can do on your graphs. These are just the basic ones, stem, hist. You can, um, if you want to change the, the bin widths, okay, you can set the breaks in histogram. What the breaks breaks and color, COL is for color, these are what are called parameters. They're just adjustments to your graph. So if you can use breaks and set the vector, what these numbers represent are the end, the boundaries of the bins from 300 to 800. So you can choose what you want to go there. You can set the color. You can um, add a parameter called LAS which just changes the direction of the tick marks on the y-axis. It makes everything horizontal, which is a little bit easier to read. There's another parameter here, which is freak equals false, which means don't make a frequency histogram, make a density histogram. It's a little bit of an odd way of doing it, but it should make sense based on the fact that we've studied both frequency, frequency and density histograms. Um, now, this goes through a somewhat complex way of creating 
a cumulative um, density or cumulative frequency histogram. Um, I don't necessarily recommend doing it in R. It's a little messy. So you may want to um, just do cumulative things by hand. Um, as we move into section 1.3 and 1.4 here, it explains how you can find um, numerical summaries of data, things like mean, median, quantile, okay, and variance, standard deviation, five number summary is five num, and then the box plot that we discussed already. Okay. You can make a horizontal box plot, and you can put more than one box plot in the same graph following this model. Notice that I create two different vectors, one for the PTSD and one for the healthy individuals. I create a data frame, okay, which is really a, just a, a, a data form or data structure that has more than one vector. It has multiple, it's made up of multiple vectors. And then I make the box plot from that data frame. Other ways to do it, this is just a nice, compact, easy way um, to accomplish this. So that is the end for this video and um, hope it helped you. I'll, I'll take suggestions for other topics to cover in future videos. You can post that on Piazza. Thank you.